From the Salesforce Tower in downtown San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Accenture Tech Vision 2019, brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in downtown San Francisco at the brand newly opened Salesforce Tower, the 33rd floor, the middle of the brand new Accenture Innovation Hub. We're excited to have our next guest who's been part of the Innovation Labs and the Innovation Hubs and, and a lot of innovation at Accenture for years and years and years. You've seen him before. We were at the 30th anniversary, I think last year, all the way from Paris. He's Mark Carell Billiard. He's the Senior Managing Director for Accenture Labs. Mark, great to see you again. Great to see you, Jeff, again as well. So, uh, so what do you think of the new space? here. I love it. I just love it. I mean, just like, and I saw it like building and everything and now it's ready and we open it today. I mean, it's just like amazing. The stairs, did you see the stairs? I saw the Five stairs. stairs. Really yes. Amazing. Everything is good there. I mean, that's, it's, I think it's a, it's not an office like Paul said, Paul already said, it's really something better. And it's, it's a tool for explaining what is innovation or architecture at, uh, at play. I mean, how we, we use it, how we connect the labs with the Liquid Studio, all the ventures, right. everything, that's great. But now it's all brought together, right? Because yeah. you had a couple satellite locations in the yeah, Bay Area had, that are and, now And I think that was together. the story of putting all this stuff in one we call the Innovation Center, uh, the Innovation Hub, and so putting everything like, in the same building and have different floors where we can address different talking with our clients. Like, are we talking about research? Are we talking about more prototyping? Are we talking about, I mean, at the end it's all about driving innovation right. at scale. Right. At scale. So we're here for the uh, technology vision. We are. Uh, which will be in, in a little bit. Uh, yeah. Paul and the team will present. It will. Five new trends for 2019. Right. One of the ones they call this DARK, D-A-R-Q. I know. Which is distributed ledger technology, formerly known as uh, as blockchain, but we it's don't want to call it blockchain. Right. Yeah. Uh, AI, yeah. extended reality, extended. which is every kind of form, extended, augmented, uh, mixed virtual, reality and everything, mixed, that's everything. Right. and quantum computer. You bet. So from from a lab's <laughs> point of view, from a, from an Accenture, uh, yeah. you know, kind of innovation, looking forward, inventing the future, as you like to say, which I think is a great yeah. tagline. What are some of your priorities going forward now that you got this great new space, which is one of what I think 11 in the United States, right? So my priorities are all of them. I mean, all, all of them. All of the abilities. All of the abilities. Like, <laughs> because I was like, I was just like, you remember at the time we we're talking about smack, like social mobility. Uh, there was analytics and cloud. Right. I would say that dark is a new smack. So we saw that basically that technology has evolved, you know, and like from analytics with like more AI work and everything, but still combine, combine everything. You can still think about like social media, like collaborative stuff. We're going to go through immersive reality where we're going to continue collaborating. Think about cloud. I mean, just like cloud would bring you um, high uh, throughput computing power through the cloud. Well, I mean, also quantum computing can give you like amazing capability in terms of computing power. So I would say it's like probably dark is a new smack. And so the, the lab has been working on it since, uh, I would say not since day one, but I mean at the very beginning. And so, well, obviously distributed ledger, you know that we have a lab in Sofia Antipolis. They're really spending a lot of time in the, in the blockchains. Right. And so there's a couple of things that we're doing. I, I give you a couple of uh, ideas. One is many people talk about blockchains and there's a bunch of blockchains all over. You know, there's like blockchain for manufacturing, there's blockchain for trade finance, there's blockchain for this and that. Problem is, there's no very good interoperability between those blockchains. One thing that the lab is going to be working is that how we can interop interoperate between those different blockchains. So you are basically a supply chain. You want to connect basically to a, a financial organization, how their blockchain will, will connect to your blockchain. Right. Number right. one. The second thing we're going to be working on is the smart contract. The lab believes the smart contract is not smart enough. <laughs> so we're going to add more artificial intelligence in the smart contract to see what we could do better. Think about the smart contract as a store procedure in database, how we make the store procedure a little bit better. Right. I mean, it's just right. analo analogy type of things. Okay? Well, I'm just thinking of the, of the, the the, the blockchain conversation, right? Because I think you had a demo talking about DHL. Yeah, DHL, is what, is exactly. One of the yeah, yeah. But as that logistics and, and that, that merchandise moves through their system, as you said, there's a lot of different touch points with a lot of different systems. Well, so if it's not an aggregated absolutely. system, it's a problem. And then absolutely. the other thing is you don't necessarily need all the data for each person you know, or, or, or yeah. transaction all along the line, right? You, you're absolutely right. And, and I talk about interoperability between blockchains, but there's going to be also interoperability between the blockchain that you're implementing and the legacy environment that you have. And this needs to be addressed as well, okay? So a lot of thinking about um, uh, blockchains. I mean, I've always said for me that blockchain is the digital right management of your future, that kind of protocol. Right, and right. we're working with companies that are like basically creating movies and stuff like that and how we leverage blockchain to exchange those movies. 
between different parties. I mean, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff that we're going to be able right. to do. So that's blockchain. The D for distributed ledger. A for artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence obviously is something very big in the labs. We have three labs that are dedicated to artificial intelligence. Three? Yeah. Out of seven. One here, San Francisco. The other one in Bangalore. Okay. And the third one in Dublin, Ireland. Okay. And each of them are covering a little part of the things that we want to do with artificial intelligence. It's all about accelerating the artificial intelligence. So how are we going to think about new infrastructure and new way of doing machine learning using weak leveling. It's all about explainable AI, how you're going to connect the knowledge graph with machine learning so that the probabilistic model will give you an explanation of why they have decided to select um, well, this picture or, or this information and so forth. And, and, and then and basically the other things that we're going to be working on uh, artificial intelligence is that the human-machine interaction. And one thing that we want to address is what we call the conversational aspect of virtual agents. If you look at virtual agents today, it's voice comment about things. Right, I right. Mean, you can't really engage in a conversation. I want to look at that and how they're going to understand context, how you're going to be exchanging better, and how you're going to flow a better conversation with that. One thing that's going to be very important in everything that we're doing is going back to semantic network, knowledge management, knowledge graph, how we combine knowledge graph with all these machine learning capabilities. That's artificial intelligence in the lab. Then you get, we'll just work down the list, right? Then you've got the extended reality, reality, right? Okay, Whatever so kind extended, of reality is. So we're going to continue doing a lot of stuff related to extended reality, immersive learning. Uh, we're going to use that. Um, I think what's going to be important for us is that not to look at extended reality just from a, a vision standpoint, but try to use the combinatorial effect of every immersive senses that you have. So like basically hearing, you know, uh, also smelling, uh, touching the optic, and right. how you combine all right. those uh, senses, I mean, to change completely the, uh, the, 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 I mean, the vision, not a vision, but like the experience, what right. do you really feel. Right. In fact, if you go to this innovation hub, I don't know if you've seen that, we have an igloo. We did, I tell the three, the we have 360. An igloo. That's right, right the 360. Right to try to immerse you already in some quantum computing experience. I think that's a great, good segue also for, right, for, for the quantum. quantum. All right. right. So, so quantum is that we've been doing a lot of progress with quantum. So, you know, like, if, uh, like two years ago, we started already to work with D-Wave. And then we have worked also with these companies called OneCubit. So we build a software develop. So, so we use their software development kit to program the quantum computer. And then we work with Biogen to do drug discovery. Uh, and, and changing basically the way you do that by accelerating that through quantum computing. But we've continued. I mean, we've, we've announced basically some partnership with IBM to look at their platform. We're continuing uh, working with other um, interesting platform like Fujitsu, right, like their digital right. annealer and, and so forth. And, and what we want to do is that, you know, I mean, Accenture is very vendor agnostic related to all those vendors. What we want to do is that we want to understand more about how you program those different architecture, how you see what type of problems they can solve, and how best you can program them. And so if we use basically an abstraction layer on top of all the hardware, and then we can program on top of that, this is really cool. This right, is exactly right. what we want to do. Let so me how close is it? How close is it to getting the production ready? I mean, you got it in the in the, the new vision I, for 2019, I, yeah. but I mean, what, are people just playing with I, it? Or is no, it no, ready no, for no, prime no, time? No, no, you know, no. kind of where is it? Do you so think? first of all, on the dark stuff. I mean, all the people of our clients that we have. I mean, quantum yeah. specific. Quantum okay, specifically. Quantum specific, yeah. So yeah. I, I think we're talking about like three to five years okay. to start to have like real solutions. Right now we have prototype, but we're moving to more pilots, and then I think the solution will come soon. And it's just like probably in five years' time we'll start into a right, right. Let me give you another it's idea. It's order of magnitude difference in the way that you can compute. Yeah, yeah, data. exactly. And I think that's going to change the game. And it's right. going to change the game on everything. Let right, me give you right. maybe a last example that I'm sure you're going to love. And it's all about optimization matchmaking. You know, like our tech vision this year is all about uh, hyper personalization, like hyper personalization, right. plus on demand delivery, and so that's how, at the moment, you know, you're going to change the game, momentary moment. How you're going to change the reality of right. people? Right. What are you going to be able to do? I'm going to tell you that where we're going to use quantum computing. We're going to use quantum computing to do a better matchmaking between a person who's waiting for an organ and an organ that you're going to transplant to this person. And the moment is the accident that happens on the street. Right. You know. Right. There is going to be someone basically dying uh, on, on the streets or someone dead, and then you need basically to get this organ. It could be a kidney, for example. Every organ has a time lapse. 
that you can use basically to transport that to someone else. Now the question is that you have the organ, it's in basically uh, ice cubes environments like right, box, right, right. and then you transplant that to someone, you have like few hours to figure out who are the best who? receiver. And this is hyper-personalization because right. you need to understand the variable of all the body that is going to receive that, but all the variables of the organ. Until now, it was all mainframe to do matchmaking. Right, right. We're rethinking that using quantum computing. It's just wild. You know, what, cloud really enabled the concept, right, of if you had infinite compute, yes. infinite store, and infinite networking at basically free, right, asymptotically approaching free, what would you build? And that's a very different way to think about problems. Not, not, only, not only we will build some amazing things, but I think we would change the reality of every people. Every people will have their own reality. They could use product and service the way they want it. I mean, this, this would be a completely different, um, not a world, but like a, 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 a game set that would be completely different, right. I think. Well, Mark, we're, we're almost out of time, and I, I just want to ask you about, about Pierre, um, yeah. former CEO of, yeah. of Accenture, passed away recently, and I was, I was really struck by the LinkedIn messages. Yeah. So many people, you know, I follow you, I follow Paul, a lot of people posted. What a special man and what an impact he had. It sounds really personally with most of the leadership here at Accenture. I wonder if you could share a few, a few yeah, thoughts. I mean, well, obviously, I mean, everyone has been very sad uh, that we lost Pierre. I mean, it was just an immersive person. What I say is like, he was like really a role model, not only in business, but in life. And he was, uh, he was so fun about, uh, fun of innovations, he loved the labs, he loved, you know, I mean, what we could do. And I think he was really thinking about like the better future for, for the people, a better future for the world and everything. And that's, that it was really amazing for that. And, you know, I mean, it's just like, um, I'm, 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 everyone was struck really, I mean, to see that. But I think we're, there was like so many testimonials pouring from our people. But what I was even more amazed is our clients. He really moved clients. And his visions, I mean, is, is an amazing legacy for Accenture. And, and we're going we're gonna, to, I mean, this is so, so precious what he left us. Right, and, right. And I think that um, I, I really want the lab, I mean, just like every, every day that we're inventing something, I'm always thinking about Pierre and what he would have thought about these things. He was always enthusiastic reading our research paper and everything. Right, so, right. So definitely the lab's going to continue to innovate. And I hope that Pierre, wherever he is, will be watching. I'm sure he's And we'll be happy down. with that. All right. Well, Mark, thanks a lot for taking a few minutes and congratulations on this just continual evolution of what you guys are doing with labs and the innovation centers and now the innovation hub here in downtown San Francisco. Thanks, Jeff. All right. He's Mark. I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're we're in downtown San Francisco at the Accenture Innovation Hub as part of the Accenture Technology Vision 2019 presentation. Thanks for watching, see you next time.